John, for the, uh, the introduction, and thank you, the organizers, for having me here. Really, really super excited to be talking to you all, and a lot of uh, entrepreneurial spirit here. So, um, I'm going to be talking about you know AI in wealth management, um, and since the since the um, the conference about imagination, I thought I'd do a little imaginating. Um, but then I thought, I can't imagine until I set the stage for what, what is the, uh, the present right now. So <laughs> because I work at Fidelity and Financial Services, I always have to have a disclaimer. And then because I use um, generative AI to create the, the slides, I also have to have a uh, disclaimer that I generated these slides with uh, beautiful.ai. And uh, really what I wrote was a narrative and some prompts. And so I, you know, some of the, the talks earlier resonated with me because I think we have to start thinking that the way you speak is actually code itself. So um, just a little bit about me. Uh, so I started my career at Goldman Sachs uh, at a hedge fund uh, during the financial crisis. Really fun. That's why there's an image of the, uh, the dandelion. That's basically how I felt when I was there. <laughs> and uh, moved on to uh, the head, uh, head the investing team at Betterment, which is a robo-advisor. Uh, started really early when ro the robo-advisor term didn't exist. Had a lot of fun there. Um, and then I, I started working at Fidelity about four and a half years ago. And now I lead an AI center of excellence there, uh, where we focus on using AI for asset management and wealth management. So yeah, so timeline, like you know, a little imagining. So the present, I, I would describe it as human and machine automation, with a sprinkle of AI in wealth management. I'll explain what I mean by sprinkle. Um, in the near future, I think it's going to be more autonomous, right? Autonomous uh, wealth management, and that's really power powered by AI and generative AI in particular. And you know, the last two bullets I'm not going to say much about, but I am learning a lot in that space. I think in the not so distant future, I think DeFi is going to be the next disruption in our, in our uh, domain. Um, because I think DeFi has the capability to fractionalize any asset. And if you think about what fractionalizing an asset means, it really uh, can give any asset cash like uh, liquidity which will have you know, uh, significant uh, implications for, for finance. Um, and then something near to my heart, uh, in the more distant future, I think qu quantum is going to be a big deal. Uh, so far, I haven't seen anything that quantum can do that classical computers can't do. But you know, in, in some more distant future, that's going to be a big deal. So the present, human machine automation with a sprinkle of AI. So why only a sprinkle? <laughs> All the tech companies are using AI already, right? Uh, there's some sort of like particularly, you know, um, something very specific to our domain that you know tech companies don't face really. Um, it's that you know markets are always in flux, so not nationality. Uh, investing also have a small data problem, right? It's not like penta pentabytes of data uh, compared to like what tech companies would have. And because the cost of error is pretty high, if you're you know, trading a trillion dollars, investing a few hundred billion dollars here and there, uh, you really need models that are pretty interpretable and explainable. So OK, those are challenges. But there are sprinkles. So let's talk a little bit about where, where, where the sprinkles are, the AI sprinkles are. I think this is how I you know, think about the investing cycle. A lot of people say it like, really complicated. I just like to think about it as three things. What? How much and when, right? What do you want to buy? How much do you want to buy it, sell it? And when do you want to do it? And you know, AI is starting to affect and be used and can be used in this entire investment cycle. So I'll give you an example here uh, that the team did um, and is you know, involved asset allocation, decided the what, what to buy. So here, I think this is the first instance where um, we use reinforcement learning and inverse reinforcement learning and combine the two for the purpose of asset allocation. Uh, so in some sense, you know, like a, we looked at um, collective intelligence right, of uh, funds and trading and then derived an implied reward function using inverse reinforcement learning. And then 
once we have a reward function, then we could use the technologies of uh, RL to optimize the trace. There's a paper I cited here, you can take a look. I think this is pr pretty promising, um, but it does suffer th from the small data problem, and there's some technical challenges here to make it you know, really widely uh, applicable. The other thing that people don't talk a lot about is that you know, if you're trying to um, do right by the customer and you know, create value for them, you actually have to like, understand their behavior. And, um, and this is something I was aware of when I was at a robo, um, that the behavior gap, which is that how much investors actually experience their returns versus their benchmark could be quite big. You know, here, I think th I took this data from one of these websites. And this year, it was 1%. It could be as high as 2%, 3%. It just depends on how you trade. And I had another slide, but I, I took it off because I, I realized I'm no longer at Betterment, so I need to get approval for that slide. <laughs> but you basically see people you know, following the market right, in a bad way. So behavior is a big deal. So we have to, you know, we have to find ways to mitigate that. Um, and then financial planning. So that's another thing, right? Because you know, asset allocation, asset management is not the whole story. You have to give people plans. And some of our <laughs> collaborators are here, but we did some work, uh, the team with our collaborators um, did some work using reinforcement learning to just do uh, tax smart withdrawal. And you know, here's a case study where you saw that you had some meaningful tax alpha and you save people in taxes. So those, those are sprinkles. The near future, I think it's more autonomous, more autonomous wealth uh, management, and it's gonna be powered by AI. And let me explain what I mean by that. So to my surprise, maybe not so surprising, large models today, like ChatGPT, can actually give you know, pretty reasonable financial advice at scale. I actually tested it when, you know, when it first came out, and it kept on telling me, I'm not a financial advisor, I can't give you financial advice. But it's just that I didn't prompt it well enough. So <laughs> here's, here's an example. I actually, the first prompt you know, that I did, it actually gave me the betterment portfolio. It looked very much like the betterment portfolio, which I helped create. So I said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, don't be so verbose, chat GPT. Give me some tickers and just waste. And then look at it. It was really not verbose at all. It just gave me tickers and waste. And then I started asking to explain. And it, it did a pretty good job. And I duplicated the <laughs> this, uh, this, but anyways. Um, so yeah, so it, it has the capability of giving you know, financial advice to scale, and I do believe people will use it in, in such a form. Uh, another thing that you know, I want to think about, I think in the very near future, is that is personalization, hyper-personalization. This idea of um, you know, why should your benchmark be S&P? You're an individual person. Your benchmark should be tailored to you. There's this idea about giving everybody a personal index, which then your account is tracked to that personal index, was actually proposed in 2021 by a professor here at MIT, Andy Lo. And he talks about how AI is gonna be used to do that. The technology is basically ready to do that today. And I think it will be done. That you will not be tracking the S&P, you'll be tracking your own personal index. So, and you, know, and you have to infuse it, right? You have to infuse wealth management with behavioral design. I think about that a lot, right? Um, you know, you have to do better risk profiling. You have to have better, you know, personalized insights for that client, and you have to have monitoring. You know, are they behaving badly? Are they buying when they shouldn't be? Are they selling when, you know, they panic? And then you have to understand their entire financial picture in order to optimize cash flow. So infusing all that, right, with their uh, behavioral design will create the, the platform of the future. And here is uh, something that you know, like, is already out in the literature. It's the idea of an AI planner. Um, I cite this article by um, one of the investment committee members at, that I recruited at Betterment. You, know, you see that financial plans can be very complicated. You can have a lot of goals. And you, can have a lot of, you can set prioritization of those goals. And you have different horizons. But it's becoming, using AI, this is a mathematically tractable problem. Today, nobody can really tell you if I have three goals I want to save for retirement, my kids, you know, buy a house and that. Nobody can tell you really how you should allocate your cash flow toward those goals. But very soon, I think, you know, with RL and with, you know, uh, some AI technology, you can. And very seamlessly, too. So putting it all together, I think, the, you know, the platform of the future is an investor. It's a planner. 
It's also a therapist. It's an educator and a coach, right? It's investing because it helps you automate your investment decisions, provide you a personalized benchmark. It's a planner because it can build your entire financial plan, give you advice, cash flow management, tax optimization. It's also a therapist because it knows, you know, it knows your risk profile. It will send you, um, it, it will support you and give you advice during times of market volatility like today, like, like now, like you know, in the bank crisis. Uh, it will educate you, teach you things that you didn't know, and it will coach you to financial success. So I also, you know, given some prompts, I asked ChatGPT to imagine a fictional firm, and then it created this one, Futura Wealth. And here's a press release that it created. So this is from my startup uh, days. You know, before we launch a product, we like to write a press release about the product, and then we like to write a testimonial. I didn't have time to write the testimonial, but anyways, Futura Wealth is, a, you know, AI-centric transformation is attributed to zero key factors. Advanced predictive analytics, holistic risk assessment, hyper-personalization of asset allocation and financial planning, and uh, portfolio management and AI po power customer support with chatbots and VA. Open 27. Thank you.